to thee, O Queen of Heaven, Alleluia. He whom thou wast meet to bear, Alleluia. As he promised, hath arisen, Alleluia. Pour for us to God thy prayer, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, didst vouchsafe to give joy to the world, grant we beseech thee that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have bestowed on us Paschal remedies. Endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And Peter testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added to their number. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. 
the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those who hope in His steadfast love, to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned to you yesterday at the homily on Easter Monday, we are going to be studying the Acts of the Apostles for the next 50 days until May 31st, 2020, which is the Sunday of Pentecost. If you pay attention as we are studying the Acts of the Apostles, you will see the Apostles filled with the Holy Spirit, the followers of Jesus, go from doubt to determination, from confusion to conviction, and from fear to faith. It is important that we study the Acts of the Apostles because unfortunately, as I have mentioned to you over the last couple of days, most Catholics never read their Bible. What bothers me most is when people will confront me after I say that and say, Father, I don't know what you're talking about. I have tested in the last 22 years of priesthood, hundreds of people in classrooms from grade 1 to grade 12. I have asked them the question, what is the fifth book in the New Testament? I'll even give them a hint. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then... 99% of the time, they cannot answer Acts of the Apostles. 
So do not be telling me that Catholics read their Bible. Please, 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 do me a favor. Do not test me. Catholics don't read their Bible. If 99% of Catholics do not know that the fifth book in the New Testament is the Acts of the Apostles, Catholics don't read their Bible. So please, do not be telling me that Catholics read their Bible. Please, please, do not insult my intelligence. Do not insult my intelligence. Catholics do not read their Bible. Is it their fault? Absolutely not. As I mentioned to you, it is a historical development that 500 years ago, the Protestant Christians ran away with the Bible, the Catholics ran away with the sacraments, and the Pentecostal Christians ran away with the God, the Holy Spirit. You might as well put the Catholics and the Orthodox together, running away with the sacraments. But do not tell me that Catholics read their Bible. They do not read their Bible. This is the first time many Catholics will be studying the Acts of the Apostles. So for the next 50 days, we will be studying the Acts of the Apostles. Today's first reading from Acts looks at chapter 2 of Acts. In today's reading from Acts, we hear when Peter addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him Jesus, both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. They were cut to the heart and asked, what should we do? Peter answers, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine the pain caused to the Jews by Peter challenging them and saying, you killed the Messiah, the Messiah you've been waiting for thousands of years, you have killed. Peter, like Jesus Christ, was not politically correct. Peter, like Jesus Christ, didn't say things to people to make them feel good. He challenged them with love, always with love, to become mature disciples of Jesus Christ. And he challenged them. You killed the Messiah. They were shocked. What should we do? Obviously, that is the correct response. Repent. Be baptized. That's how Peter responds. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, takes them from doubt to determination, from confusion to conviction, and from fear to faith. In today's world, we are so politically correct. We're so worried about hurting people's feelings. We don't hurt people's feelings on purpose. We challenge people in love to come to be the mature disciples of Jesus Christ. That is our purpose, as was Peter's purpose in challenging the Jews of his time. This is a time that is most unusual in the church. The Catholic Church has been, for all intents and purposes, closed down. This is an opportunity for us to mature in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, for the next number of days, we will be reading the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then we read the Gospel, which is pre-Pentecost. And if you look at the Gospel today, Jesus turns to Mary Magdalene and asks, Woman, why are you weeping? Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. There's all sorts of doubt. There's all sorts of confusion. There's all sorts of fear. The Holy Spirit, after Pentecost, takes all that away. It is important that we understand the role of the Holy Spirit, especially during this time of COVID, because, again, the world is giving us doubt, 
confusion, and fear. By the power of the Holy Spirit in studying the Acts of the Apostles, we can come to determination, conviction, and faith. There are 28 chapters in the Acts of the Apostles. The following video that we are going to show you will summarize Acts 1 to 7, chapters 1 to chapter 7, by a group called the Bible Project. Watch the video. And I would challenge you. Yesterday I challenged you to find a Bible. Today I'm challenging you, after you watch the video, read Acts chapter 1 to 7. Become familiar with those chapters based on the video you are about to watch. As you come to a deeper awareness of Acts of the Apostles, I pray, and this is my prayer, that whatever doubt you have, the Holy Spirit will enter you and become determination. Whatever confusion you have, the Holy Spirit will enter you and become conviction. Whatever fear you have, the Holy Spirit will enter you and become faith. This is my prayer for you as we begin to study and read and understand Acts of the Apostles. One of the earliest accounts about Jesus of Nazareth, his life, death, and resurrection, was written by a man named Luke. We know it as the Gospel of Luke. But Luke continued the story in a second volume. Called the Book of Acts. And it's all about what Jesus continued to do after his resurrection. Acts begins with the disciples who are hanging out with Jesus, who's just come back to life, which is mind-blowing to imagine. And then for weeks, the risen Jesus kept teaching them about his upside-down kingdom, the new creation that he launched through his death and resurrection. This is exciting stuff, and the disciples are ready to go tell the world. But then Jesus tells them to wait and to stay in Jerusalem until they receive a new kind of power so they can be faithful witnesses to Jesus and his kingdom. Then he says that their mission is going to begin in Jerusalem, then move out to Judea and Samaria, and then from there out into the nations. It's like a road map for the whole book of Acts. Then the disciples saw Jesus enthroned as king of all creation. So the disciples wait, wondering when this power is going to come. And then comes the time of Pentecost. So this is an ancient Israelite festival during the early summer, and thousands and thousands of Jewish pilgrims would come back to Jerusalem from all over the world, all these different languages and cultures colliding in the city. And the disciples are together in a house, which is suddenly filled with rushing wind along with fire. Fire splinters off into tongues of fire hovering over people's heads. What's this all about? Yeah, so Luke is tapping into a repeated Old Testament theme. When God's presence showed up similarly at Mount Sinai, he made a covenant with Israel and gave them the Ten Commandments. Then later, when God's glory came in a pillar of fire, it filled the tabernacle when he came to live among them. That was just one pillar of fire, not many. Exactly. Luke's making an important point here. This is God's personal temple presence, God's spirit that was foretold by Israel's prophets. And now it's come to take up residence in the new temple of Jesus' body, that is, his people. They've become little mobile temples where God now dwells. And they start to tell stories about Jesus, but they're speaking in languages that they didn't know before, yet all the visitors can understand them. What's this all about? Well, Peter gets up to explain that this is the fulfillment of Israel's hopes based on the scriptures. God's plan was always to use the unified family of Abraham to bring peace and justice to the world. But the tribes of Israel had been scattered because of the exile. Now here at Pentecost, representatives from all of the tribes come back together and they're introduced to their Messiah, the crucified and risen Jesus, so they can now become the restored people of Israel. And thousands of them start following the way of Jesus. Which brings us to Luke's tale of two temples. So you've got the temple that Herod built in Jerusalem, where Jesus' disciples worship like the rest of the Israelites. But now there's also Jesus' temple, which consists of people. This temple's meeting together in homes all over Jerusalem, and they were approaching life in a radical new way. Right, think about it. Many of these pilgrims aren't even from Jerusalem, so they formed these new families, and they're all depending on each other. Yeah, people would sell their stuff, provide for the poor among them. They ate their meals together. They said their daily prayers together. They were learning from the apostles what it meant to live as if Jesus is the true king of the world. And it must have been exhilarating. 
But it wasn't all fun and games. Being God's temple is serious business, just like in the Old Testament. So you might know about that strange story in the book of Leviticus about two priests who disrespect God in the temple and then suddenly die. Well, Luke includes here a similar story of two disciples who dishonor God's spirit in this new temple, and they suffer a similar fate. So there's corruption in the community, but the bigger problem is coming from the outside. Yeah, from the other temple. Its leaders are threatened by this new messianic movement, and so they arrest the apostles, they try to stop them. And this brings us to the final story in the Jerusalem section of Acts. We're introduced to a new disciple, Stephen. Oh yeah, Stephen, he's on fire. He steps up as a leader among the disciples to serve the poor, and he would go to the temple courts to teach people about the way of Jesus. So the temple leaders arrest Stephen, and they find false witnesses to accuse him of dishonoring Moses and of being a terrorist who's threatening the temple. In response, Stephen gives this powerful speech about how predictable this whole situation was. Yeah, he retells the whole Old Testament story, highlighting characters like Joseph, Moses, and the prophets, people who are consistently rejected and persecuted by their own people. Israel's been resisting God's representatives for centuries, and so their rejection of Jesus and now of his followers is a rejection of God himself. They get angry, and they start to execute him by picking up rocks and smashing him to death. And as he's dying, he commits himself to the way of Jesus, to suffer because of the sins of others. He even cries out, Lord, don't hold the sin against them. This is basically what Jesus said at his death. Exactly. Stephen becomes the first martyr of the Jesus movement, with many more to come. But this persecution contains seeds of hope, which is why Luke introduces us to a new character here, a religious leader named Saul. He stands over Stephen's dead body and even approves of the whole thing. Wait, Saul, you mean the man who becomes the apostle Paul? Yes, Luke is showing how even this tragic murder can't stop Jesus' kingdom. And so many persecuted disciples scatter out of Jerusalem, and just as Jesus said, they head into Judea and Samaria. Now, the story of what happens there, that's what the next section of Acts is all about. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and human hands, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, and under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time between Easter and Pentecost, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our hope, Tom Collins, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurre resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, Natalio de la Isla, Margaret Sammy, Esther Laput, Andres Gill, Margaretha Silvia Sulisto, Mary Celine, Theodorus Jacob Coekeritz, Neil Kazin, Jerry Garona, Marino Spitziri. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray one Hail Mary for all who are sick and for those who care for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. 